the chicken is fat, is that because it eats too much or because it doesn't exercise? Or is that something about its genetics? Hypothesis thinking is deeply ingrained in our daily lives. We as humans always seek for explanations of everything we see, or should I say every fact we get. Why is the ocean blue? Why is Mars red? Why are we not there yet? Why did the water on Mars disappear? And speaking of water, why do we drink water? Why are there so many companies selling bottled water? Why are their sales going down? As important as hypotheses are in consulting, the PST has a fair weight for questions about this. Luckily for you, you've been unconsciously working with hypotheses in your head for as long as you can remember. So it may seem troublesome at first, but once you grasp the logic, this 14% of the test becomes sort of like bonus questions to score and accelerate on the clock. But before that, there's some learning to do. Hi, my name is Kim Tran, a former McKinsey consultant and the founder of the platform Management Consulting Prep. I have a simple yet profound philosophy on how to tackle the PST. You can watch it through this link right here. But now, let's bring the show to root cause reasons. What is it? Well, this is one of the more popular question types on the McKinsey PST, in which your ability to identify logic-backed explanations, aka root cause reason, for facts provided is tested. Think of it this way. In reading facts questions, we talked about in the previous video, they provide you with some facts and test your ability to understand them. The focus of the question is on the fact. With root cause reasons, the focus shifts outside into sort of the input end of the logic string. Some of the question formats are, which of the following reasons, if true, will help explain the facts? Which of the following does not explain the facts? which of the following points is not a valid reason for the facts, and etc. The vital element to tackle these questions is to absolutely understand the logic of it. Let's get this out of the way. Root causes, or in simple language, explanations do not have to be true. It can be true, be false, or be unproven. But the more important thing here is that it doesn't matter. What matters is, if I say that magic word again, if that root cause reason is true, does it explain the fact? Notice here that the logical flow is one direction. The other direction will be talked about in fact-based conclusion questions. Okay, so before this gets too complicated, let's look at an illustrating example. Let's say you're given this fact. Visits to the website mconsultingprep.com were relatively low last month. What can be some qualified root cause reasons of that fact? 1. There were some major technical issues. Some particular visitor could not access the website. 2. Last month was December, in which the overall market demand for job prep materials is usually lowest in the year. 3. The rise of M Consulting Prep YouTube channel makes audience go to the website less often. 4. The entrance of other new consulting prep blogs. Notice that we don't know if any of the three possible root causes above is correct or not. They don't have to be. But we know for sure that the, those possible reasons, if true, do explain the fact of low traffic. Now let's explain some common pitfalls. What makes a statement not a potential reason for a particular fact? Well, there are two ways here. Wrong subject or wrong context and wrong trend or wrong direction. Yeah, I know these are not the best names, but at least they sound me -see, huh? Okay, wrong subject. This is when the subject is irrelevant. Usually the statement, if true, will have zero effect on the context. An example of this would be, the entrance of new investment banking prep blogs. Regardless of the direction, which we will talk about in just a second, the entrance of banking blogs has zero effect on MCP's traffic. Wrong trend, on the other hand, is when the direction of the effect is reversed. An example of this would be the exit of other existing consulting prep blogs. 
Here, even though the subject consulting prep blogs is relevant, the trend, however, is reversed. The exit of consulting blogs will contribute to increasing visit trend. Therefore, the statement will have a reverse effect on the context. For illustrative purposes, the above example is fairly easy and straightforward. You're ready to tackle a more challenging example? Please go to our website for free practice questions just on root cause reasons. Find the link in the description. If you're thinking this is too simple, well, that's exactly how I'd like you to feel. That's why we tackle the PST this way. Check out my philosophy on the McKinsey PST Master video. The PST as a whole is a very difficult test. There are too many elements in play. But if we chop it down to bite-sized pieces, the test seems a lot easier. We do it one at a time. We will continue the series with the next one on logic flow, fact-based conclusion. Until then, good luck practicing root cause reasons. At Management Consulting Prep, we believe everybody can pass the McKinsey PST. We do because we have an amazing methodology in tackling it. Are you a believer?